Hey MVPs, Rico Knows here. Going to be talking to you guys about the Arizona Wildcats. If you aren't aware, I do a deep dive on every single team in America. Now, I'm not going to show you the full chart with all the teams and my assessment on all the teams. That's only for MVPs, and I'm thinking about making this video free. So, I'm going to do my deep dive on Arizona. They'll be the first team in the Big 12 that I've done. And then the rest of the teams, obviously, you got to be an MVP to see them. Just the other day, I did Texas A&M put it out there for free it's on youtube it's on patreon it's on the free tab but here we are i'm going to give you an assessment on arizona for the 2024 season let's go when you look at it regular season wins they have met seven and a half wins this is crazy because when i first made the chart if you go look at other pictures of it uh, you can't see it in this video because i don't want to give away all the other picks for free but if you see the chart arizona was eight, eight and a half now they go and lose a head coach they go and lose some players in the portal and now they're down to seven and a half and you're getting even money either way you go so do you think arizona is going to win seven games or eight games now i'm going to tell you guys having them down to seven and a half is absurd let's go talk about why here we go so arizona playing in the pac-12 one of the strongest conferences last year top to bottom very competitive they started off the season against Northern Arizona, dominant in their win, and then they go and lose in overtime to Mississippi State. But this loss to a terrible Mississippi State team is not indicative of who Arizona was or is because Arizona was starting the wrong quarterback. Noah Fafita was not the starting quarterback. They were starting the wrong player. And they struggled or they barely got by Stanford, beat UTEP, fine. But it was this game against Washington last year when I started talking to MVPs and I said, guys, listen to me. Arizona's very good. Arizona's not okay. They're not, okay. They're not kind of good. They're very good. They just went up against the national champion runner-up and lost by a touchdown. The next week, they lose in triple overtime to USC and their Heisman Trophy quarterback and all this shit. But I'm telling you, they're very good. Those two games were the first two starts for Noah Fafita. And after that, they went on a tear. And they beat the hell out of Cam Ward. They beat the hell out of a lot of teams. Found ways to win here and there. But the thing about them is their defense in the Pac-12, keeping teams under 25 points, keeping teams well under their season average. Their defense was better than people think. And this ass whooping they gave to Oklahoma in the bowl game tells me all you need to know. Okay? Oklahoma is an SEC team. Oklahoma showed up, and they were not even remotely ready. And that same team you saw Oklahoma being, yep, they've, they've added some parts. It's the same team that was playing in that bowl game four months ago. It is, for the most part. And Arizona... For all the teams in the world that talk about having a family culture, that talk about having a positive culture, Arizona proved it. Arizona is the personification of unity. Arizona is the real deal. You lose your head coach and you only lose six players on the roster? Yes, 12 players left, but six of them were recruits. They don't count. Only six players from your roster follow coach? everybody else stays put it's a remarkable thing and then brett brennan coming in from san jose state as the head coach dude he knows what he's doing he gets the most out of everything bro he gets the most juice out of, juice out of every squeeze they got position coaches i believe in wholeheartedly development of players i went and studied san jose state tape for this video I wanted to make sure I understood what this coaching staff was about. They're about development. They actually play more offensive linemen than you think because they want them going 100% every single play. So if you're not ready to go, somebody else can slip in for you. I want you guys to think about this. We don't rotate offensive linemen on other teams. This team, they want their offensive linemen to operate in the red. Like redline it, redline it, go all out. Don't save yourself because you know you got a long game ahead of you. Just redline it. We'll find somebody else when you need to recover and get some rest. We got other guys on the bench. Okay, now we'll talk about the spring game and we'll go there. So looking at last season, obviously this team is loaded. Noah Fafita at quarterback, he's short. Them boys from Servite don't play. 
Servite, Servite, Servite all day. They all showed up a couple years ago, about three years ago. I made many videos about them on TikTok. I told you guys, Noah Fafita is the future. Yes, he had to redshirt his first year, never got on the field. While T-Mac was in on the field, it was a little awkward for me. I look like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I knew what I was talking about. This little guy is awesome, and he's a dual threat. They won't talk about it, but he can actually run and extend plays. Got a gun for an arm. Running backs, Jonah Coleman leaves, went to Washington. Okay, DJ Williams not here anymore. But when you start looking at these running backs, I need you to understand how great Rayshon Luke is. Go turn on the tape. Speedy Luke, that's his nickname, Speedy. For him to be third or fourth string running back on your team is bananas. That's how good he is. That's how good the running back room is. And I'll show you in a bit when I look at the depth chart. T-Mac, that is the best receiver in America. You want to argue about it? You want to go grab Luther Burden? This, to me, is the best receiver in America. 90 receptions. 90 receptions, 1,400 yards, 10 touchdowns. Could you imagine a guy on your team scores 13 touchdowns, has 90 receptions, and nobody thinks he's better than you? Imagine that. You play on a team. Jacob Cowing is going ham. Jacob Cowing's great. I love him. Just got drafted, I think, in the fifth round. Jacob Cowing is great. He's him. But when you watch this team on the field, nobody thinks Jacob Cowing's the best receiver. And he had 90 receptions, 13 touchdowns. It doesn't matter. T Mac is that great. Now you lose Tanner. He went to the NFL. Okay. You got Montana, Montana Lominus Craig coming back. You lose Kevin Green Jr., went to the transfer portal. He went up to Washington after spring. He was the third wide receiver. Malachi Riley's still here. He's good depth. He knows all the position groups now. He can play everywhere. I think last year he was just the, uh, maybe he was the Z. He was, he was playing, if you don't know, X, Y, Z. I, I won't get into it, but the way receivers go. The guy on the line, your X, that's your number one receiver. Your Y is your tight end. Your Z is the guy off the line. Okay, long story, long story. Keon Burnett, stri straight out of Servite. High school teammates with T-Mac and Noah Fafita. Great player. Well, initially uh, committed to USC, jumped in the transfer portal, was going to depart, came back to school, come back and play with your brothers. Now, he has not been utilized at all. For multiple years now, he's not been utilized. There's a reason he's coming back, though, and that's San Jose State. Go study the tape. <laughs> they use two tight ends. They use their tight ends a lot. San Jose State does. That scheme uses tight ends a lot. We'll see what happens. Tyler Loop coming back. Defensively, Jacob Manu is – he's from Servite as well. Shout out to Servite. Jacob Manu is, is the leader of the defense, the best player you're going to see on tape, and he's coming back. So is Dalton Johnson, Gunnar Maldonado, Stooks, Flo. Like, you just saw that one, two, three, four, five of your top six defensive leaders are all coming back. The continuity is immense. It's ridiculous how good they are in the secondary in their linebackers. This is a real team, y'all. And, and I think the Big 12 is going to be on notice, and people don't realize it. Obviously, Vegas doesn't realize it. Vegas has no clue what they're doing when they put this win total at 7.5. None. There's just no way. I, I refuse to believe it in the slightest. I think it's ridiculous. So let's go look at this. Uh, looking at their depth chart now. Like I said, T-Max here. In the transfer portal, they land Romello Murphy. Romello Murphy, the leading receiver at ODU last year, showed up, took over that wide receiver room, and got on the map. Now you have Romello Murphy as your third best wide receiver. Are you kidding me? These guys are all amazing. I saw Jones making plays in the spring game. I saw Riley making plays in the spring game. Oh, by the way, true freshman, looking physically dominant. Phelps over here doing his thing. I really like this wide receiver room. Yep, I already told you they're better than a lot of wide receivers. I, I think I have them number one in the Big 12. I don't want to be missing a team right now. Let me think. They're the number one wide receiver room in the Big 12. Yeah. Kansas. Oh, I love Kansas. Not West Virginia. No, no. I, I might be. They might be too. No. It, it, you have T-Mac, bro. That guy's the first round pick. That's crazy. This is an amazing thing. Oh, offensive line. They returned four starters. Four starters from last year. The only issue they have 
<clears throat> is they don't have depth, or at least they didn't before they hit the transfer portal. Uh, Polito and Mo weren't playing in the spring. They were taking a break, and we got to see Rhino in there and another guy. I don't see where he's at. He's not listed here. I'm forgetting his name right now. But um, when you go out and you get Ryan Stewart and you try to convince me he's third string, that's crazy. Ryan Stewart's a good player. That guy will get on the field and play. I'll talk about him on the transfer portal when we get to the list. I like him a lot. Deuce is just coming home. Not a big deal out of Northwestern. He's 6'7", something like that. Redshirted last year. Has, hasn't played at all. Uh, Matea Tia. I'm, dude, I'm terrible with names. You guys know this. But Shanko right here, this was a starter at New Mexico. He was at Arizona State for the spring. He went there in the winter, was there for the spring game. Um... And then he jumped in the portal, and he's coming over to Arizona. This is great depth right here. This is a starter material. This guy can play. And they can play anywhere. Shout out to Wooten as well. But they can play anywhere. I like when you have eight offensive linemen that can play anywhere. Speaking of playing anywhere, their tight ends are out of this world, bro. Sam Olson, one of the leading receivers. Oh, man, I'm, si I'm sorry. My gardener's coming up to the front door. This shit is pissing me off. They need to get the hell out of here. I'm so sorry, y'all. Sweetie, can you shut this back door? Thank you. It's going to be a pain in my ass. I'm sorry. The video's free. I don't care. All right, so Sam Olson, one of the tight ends, one of the leading tight ends out of San Jose State last year. Um, he can play. Coming over. For them to pencil him as the starter, though, kind of, I don't know, maybe maybe because he's familiar with the offensive scheme and the team and the coaches. I already told you about Burnett. Here's a guy nobody talks about, Roberto Miranda. Not from America. Football's not his first sport. He started doing this. Roberto Miranda looks good. He actually looks like a tight end that can put his hand in the dirt and can do it all. I think he's a more complete player than most people think. But these look, this looks like three quality tight ends. You got Noah Fafita. I'll tell you this. When I watch the other tight end or the other quarterbacks, Braden Dorman looks like he can't really play the position the way Fafita does. In other words, if Fafita ever goes down, you can't run all the same plays. We're not going to respect your play action. He has no ability to extend the play. His arm is okay, but I, nothing about him screams FBS caliber quarterback for me. Now, he is a redshirt freshman. He can be developed over time, eventually become a starter, whatever. But for me, right now, I don't see it like that. I hope Noah Fafita sticks around through his senior year and becomes one of these all-time greats where you retire his number because he's not ready to play. Now you get Adam DeMonte. I want to say his high school teammate was Brandon Phillips, Phelps at one point. But DeMonte is coming over from NAU, Northern Arizona. Doesn't look good on tape for me. I'm sure he's fine. Look, the, the Northern Arizona quarterbacks, for the last two guys that I've seen jump in the portal, I studied both of them. R.J. Martinez went to Baylor last year, now at Texas State, is 100 times better, eh, 10 times better than DeMonte here. I'm glad they got depth at quarterback. They needed players on the team, but I don't see it like that. Okay, I like Cole Tannenbaum. I like him. I know. I like him. He looked good in the spring game. I don't know much about Anthony Garcia. He's just a San Jose State kid that transferred in, followed the coaching staff, so they felt good enough to bring one of their young players with them. Doesn't hurt. We need depth. Running backs. They got an all-world all running back room. Uh, truly amazing running back room. If you look at Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt coming in, from New Mexico, if you don't know the deal, this man, it was dominant last year at New Mexico. And the year before, and the four or five years before, he was playing out of his mind. I think Alabama State. There's a whole story behind it where he was using his the wrong number or he gave up his number and somebody else played in his jersey. And so he got an extra year of eligibility. But this is a grown man amongst boys. I think it's an amazing get to put him in that running back room. Quali Conley, I thought he was going to stay at San Jose State. I really did because the offensive coordinator who just came in from Texas State, they have a working relationship. But nope, he bounced. And he's following a great coach in Zoe, right? And, and when you follow your positions coach and you have a running backs coach that everybody acknowledges is one of the best out there, you start looking around and you go, all right, Quali Conley's him. Now, he's been sharing time. He was once a 1,000-yard rusher, I think, at Utah Tech. Uh, but I like Conley's game. Like, I watched it. I think he's good. He's always been a part of a one-two punch, so I don't think he'll mind sharing carries and things like that. But those two guys, Conley and Krosky Merritt, make up one of the very best running back rooms in the Big 12. I don't care. Like, I know. I know UCF's out there. I know Texas Tech. I know Colorado. I know everybody. Kansas State. I know everybody who's got a leading rusher. Kansas. I'm telling you, these guys, talent-wise, 
Anytime you have Rayshon Luke third string, you, you're doing something. You get an Ole Miss transfer and Kendrick Riscano over here, congratulations, but he's fourth string. You came from the SEC, Ole Miss, that's cool and everything. You're not getting on the field. And Brandon Johnson looked good. He finishes strong, He finishes his run strong, doesn't try to run out of bounds. He will lower his shoulder, has a good lean. He's cool with me. Like, I like all five of those guys. I love the way they look on tape. Yep, the running back room is loaded. Defensive line is a concern for me, especially the left defensive end. These guys, for me, I watch the tape. I'm not impressed with either one of them, Chase Kennedy or uh, Stanley here. I, I looked at it, and I'm trying to get excited about it, but I don't like it. Chuba May is an enormous man uh, at nose tackle. His, his athletic feat is he said he once ran a five-minute mile. This dude is like 6'2", 250, or I'm sorry, 350. Uh, impressive. One hell of an athlete. Uh, he looks enormous. Jar Anderson, young, young talent. Young talent in the rotation. I'm cool with it. Uh, Kevon Darton, stud. Out of Syracuse, five sacks last year. Stud. Moves the pocket. And, and one thing I want to say about that is the, people don't understand how good Trey Smith is going to be. But when I watch Trey Smith on tape <clears throat> and I watch him in the spring game, the whole defensive line is playing with a different philosophy than what I'm used to them seeing them play at Arizona. And the defensive line is like getting after it more. They're not just maintaining their gaps. They're not just trying to keep it clean so Manu and Flo can make the tackles. Kind of like, you know, you're a defensive tackle. Just make sure they don't get to the second level. Just occupy this space and kind of center. That's not what they're doing. They're resetting the line of scrimmage. They're getting vertical. And it and it's problematic for those teams who try to line up and hit you traditionally versus the teams who are doing end arounds and things of that nature. I really like the way it looked on tape. I do. I like the way they're doing it. And Trey Smith, to me, is, his talent's special. Trey Smith looks like the best defensive lineman. And that's saying something. That's a transfer from San Jose State. Uh, he looks like the best defensive lineman out of all these guys. Okay? Not impressed by anything over here. Oh, by the way, Lance Keneally over here from Stanford? I would. I don't know if he can do it, but I would start him on the other side. I would put, he, he's in the rotation. That guy can play. Okay, that guy can play. Cyrus Durham is a JUCO transfer from San Mateo. A lot of these guys are from San Mateo, by the way. <clears throat> they have a pipeline from San Mateo. It is what it is. Jacob Manu, the leader of the defense, I'm with you. Some young studs coming up and giving you some depth. Uh, Justin Flo, former five-star guy coming over from Oregon. I'm not excited about him. Never really lived up to the hype, but he played well last year. It's, uh, it is what it is. You got John O'Price. He's another San Mateo transfer. Cool. Let's talk about Marquise Groves Kilbrew. By the way, I don't know if he's starting. Congratulations. Maybe they found a gem. Uh, I'm unaware, personally. No no big deal. No shade, no hate. I'm just, I am unaware. Uh, Rico does not know in that regard. Now, that being said, Marcus Groves Kilbrew, he landed somewhere, y'all. If you guys don't know, MGK um, from Georgia. Saw him play in high school. Okay. Ended up committing to AM. Now, I say from Georgia. Somebody's going to correct me and be like, no, he's from Louisville. Okay, bro. Well, before that or after that, he, he played his high school ball in Georgia. Um, eventually went to A&M. It didn't work out. This is a former four-star kid, high four-star kid. Then ended up at Louisville last year. Didn't work out before the season he was done. So there are character concerns, verified character concerns. It just hasn't worked out in certain places. I hope it does. And I hope he gives depth to this secondary. Okay, because these four dudes right here all just pop on tape. These four guys look like home run prospects, NFL guys. I like all four of these men, and they look like studs. Okay, so when you start looking at the depth, I will tell you that Jack Luttrell uh, coming over from Tennessee. He's also a Georgia kid. Played in high school at Carrollton. He played at Hebron. He played at a couple places. But Jack Luttrell used to be a wide receiver. Moved over to DB. Man, I see this kid just flying up, playing in the box. He looks like he's competing well. He looks like he's trying. Um, I like I like his game. He hit somebody pathetically hard. Like He, he went and wrecked a teammate. Uh, I want to say it was Brandon Johnson. It might have been number 28 he hit. I don't know who it was. It was 28. It couldn't have been Johnson. He hit another running back, forced to fumble in the spring game. He, he's, he's laying the wood. 
That, that kid's going to be somebody someday. Obviously not in the starting rotation right now, but you're in the two deep. You're going to make it happen. That's good. That's a good get. Demetrius Freeney, you can get excited about Demetrius Freeney. He's a transfer coming over from Miami, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, played at San Le Leandro or whatever it is, Northern California. Uh, I believe they used to have a running back named Kenny James in the early 2000s. Somebody fact check that. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But nonetheless, uh, he played up there and um, he was a quarterback. And then he went to San Mateo, played one season at San Mateo Juco, then went to Miami. I don't think he can play at the FBS. And that's just me. I don't think he's a power five guy. I don't think he's a power five guy. Um, so shout out to him. He showed up on the team. They got him. Cool. But that's how I feel about it. So those are pretty much all the transfers and players I wanted to talk about. Like I said, starter, caliber player, getting him for depth is important. I um, think I've talked about, oh, Jonah. Jonah Rodriguez coming over from San Diego State. Jonah Rodriguez is a kid who was recruited coming out of high school by San Jose State. He ended up going to San Diego, just redshirted last year. He's just more depth. Not really, don't expect too much from him in the depth chart. Stanley, the fact that he's starting, kind of surprising to me, didn't didn't pop on tape, and Chase is backing him up. Uh, I don't know, man. It just Chase looks like a good athlete. He does. He was a running back as well in high school, but I don't know. It doesn't move me like that. I'm excited for Murphy. Olsen looking good on the bench. Getting Wooten out of Oregon. Congratulations. More depth. Anderson looks like a good player. He played his, his true freshman year last year at Memphis. Remember, I don't think too highly of a lot of Memphis players, if you didn't know. Shout out to the MVPs. I, I love Memphis. I don't think too highly of some of their defensive players, I should say. Uh, was really impressed with uh, Lance's tape. Adam, like I said, congratulations. I think he's a preferred walk-on, by the way. Ryan Stewart should be in the starting lineup someday. Now, here's the thing about Ryan Stewart. It's not that he should be in the starting lineup. He's been injury prone for the last two years now. But before that, he was a starter. So it's one of those things where it's like, come on, man, get your shot. Get your shot. Uh, Trey Smith, stud. Ja'Cory Merritt, stud. Conley, stud. Darton, stud. Coming back home and do six, seven, 300 pounds. He's just coming back home. Jordan Shaw, not on the team. He, he followed the coaching staff up to um, – Washington originally a transfer from Indiana. I don't even think he's I don't think he's that that good personally. I think it's just a favor of a coach and somebody who knows somebody. I already talked about these. Owen Goss. Owen Goss, man. I understand he's not starting. He's coming over from Colgate. Man, he's he's got a long career ahead of him and or that, that he's been playing in. Looks like a very experienced backup or somebody or somebody who should be starting. Either way, you figure that out. But I like the way he plays. Okay? The the cupboard's not bare. The main the main players they lost were guys like Bill Norton, right? Losing your defensive players on the defensive line because they went to Texas to follow their coach and all that stuff. That's cool, man. But at the end of the day, I'm really impressed with Arizona. I want to tell you guys, at the end of last season, I thought Arizona was a top 10 team. I think they finished the final poll in the top 15 somewhere. And now they're magically, what, what are they? They're, they're, they're supposedly going to win seven or eight games. What did they lose? Who did they lose? They didn't lose five of their six top leading tacklers. They didn't lose their most productive receiver. They didn't lose their quarterback. They didn't lose anything. Like, what are we talking about? They lost a coach. And I guess that coach is worth something insane because if you think they're winning seven or, seven or eight games, that means you don't think they're going to be ranked. So you go from being a top 12 team in America to unranked? Nah. Nah, coaching's overrated in college football. Yeah, I said it. Coaching's overrated. The, the one thing that matters in college football is talent. Talent matters more than anything. There is no coach in the world that can bridge the gap of talent. Chris Kleiman's one of the best coaches I've ever seen at K-State. You put that K-State team, they go and win the Big 12, they get in that bowl game against Alabama, and no amount of coaching in the world is going to make them better. Greatest coach of all time is Nick Saban. He just retired. You think DeBoer's going to not win any games because Nick Saban's gone? That, that's impossible. That's not happening. So we need to just wake up and, re and recognize, yes, coaching's Im immensely important. Talent is paramount in the college game. If you have the better players every Saturday, you're going to win 90% of your games. Ask Penn State. Ask, you know, whoever. Like, look at Miami. <laughs> That was a joke. All right. So when I go look at this team and I compare them to position groups, I'm going to tell you right now, I think they beat New Mexico at home. 
They beat Northern Arizona at home. Then they go on the road to K-State, and they're going to tell you they're going to lose this game. People are going to tell you they're losing this game. I don't see it that way. No, I don't. I don't think K-State matches up well with fast teams, teams with fast wide receivers that can get over the top on their defense. This is what happened with Missouri last year. When you come in with an experienced quarterback and you're going up against Avery Johnson, who we haven't seen pass at all, Avery Johnson's had one chance to start at quarterback, and he has not thrown the ball well. Go check the stats. Go watch the film. So if you're if you're excited about K-State, cool. Join the crew of all the people excited about K-State. I don't think they match up well with Arizona. I don't. And I like Arizona in that game. I really do. So that feels like three wins. I also like Arizona with two weeks of preparation against Utah. Now, you might not like them. And that's okay. I like them. I think they win both those games. Now, if you have them losing, fine. But they're beating Texas Tech, BYU, Colorado. I don't like them against West Virginia. I don't like the way they they, they I don't like the way they match up with with West Virginia. West Virginia looks difficult. They really do. UCF difficult, right? But I've ha- I don't have them losing a game in November. There, there's just no way they're losing a game in November. At least not these last three. So if you got them, just pay attention. One win, two wins, three wins. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Even if you have them losing to K-State, Utah, even if you have them losing to K-State, Utah, and West Virginia, they're still winning eight games. They're winning nine games. The the over-under is seven and a half. They could lose four games. Who are their four losses? West Virginia, Utah, K-State, UCF. Like, I don't see four losses. This team is superiorly, like, this team is better than these guys. I I don't see four losses. I actually see them beating K-State. And if they beat K-State, they're winning 10 games. Arizona, Arizona, Arizona. One of the top 15 teams in the country. Remember, last year, 10 and 3. And they're all back for continuity. They won nine regular season games. They're on a winning streak right now. And the only games they lost are these ridiculous games where Noah wasn't the quarterback and uh, some shootouts with some really good teams. Nah, bro. They're not not losing to these teams. Nah, they're built built way better than these teams. I got news for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten regular season games, nine, eight at the worst. I'm still on the over. So I'm telling you, I'm on this over. It's a lock, and it's a two-unit lock. You guys want to see the whole chart, see me break down every single team? Please, become a, become an MVP. Go to the Patreon. Go to the YouTube. Become an MVP. And once you get MVP, you'll get a video like this on every single team in America. I'm Rico Knows. We don't miss. Arizona's going to win more than seven and a half games. You can bet on it. That's what we do. Peace.